Hello, everyone, and welcome to the DH Effect. My name is Sonia, and I have my beautiful co-host, Hillary. Our focus this month is staying true to your decided heart, even when life throws all kinds of obstacles in our way. And let's just be honest, sometimes, maybe most times, um, we are our own obstacles, aren't we? Oh my gosh, that's so true, Sonia. And you know, our, our next guest today, Boy, I'm so excited. For 30 years, he's been successfully showing entrepreneurs, leaders, sales professionals how to communicate their value and get out of their own way. His business parable, The Go-Giver, which was co-authored with John David Mann, who we had on with his wife to talk about The Go-Giver Marriage not that long ago, has sold over 1 million copies. It's been translated into 30 languages. And there are just five beautiful and tangible laws of success that are revealed throughout the book that I don't, it doesn't just make you a more successful per, uh, business person, but it's just making you a more successful human. So I just want to say thank you for this beautiful book and thank you for joining us, Bob. My absolute pleasure, Hillary, Sonia, great to be with both of you. Well, we would love to start in the beginning. So what gave you the idea to write The Go-Giver? And how did you and John decide to write it together? Yeah, so many years ago, uh, I had a, a book out. This is in the mid-90s. I had uh, my first book was called Endless Referrals. Uh, the subtitle was Network Your Everyday Contacts into Sales. And it was really a book on how entrepreneurs and salespeople who uh, they knew they had a great product or service, they knew it brought wonderful value to others, but they didn't necessarily feel confident or comfortable going out into their local communities and, and building the kinds of relationships that would result in people wanting to do business with them directly and or refer them to others. So it was really a how-to. Uh, Endless Referrals was a, a system. And I, I personally define a system as the process of predictably achieving a goal based on a logical and specific set of how-to principles. The key is predictability. If it's been proven that by doing A, you'll get the desired result of B, then you know all you need to do is A and continue to do A, and you'll get eventually the desired results of B. So it was a how-to book. Um, but I'd always loved reading business parables. Since I'd been in sales, I loved reading business parables, whether it was Og Mandino's longer form, greatest salesman in the world, or, or Klassen's richest man in Babylon, or, you know, the, the one minute series by Blanchard and Johnson, you know, go, uh, one minute manager, one minute salesperson, one minute apology, one minute this and one minute that, and all the, the wonderful parables written by many men and women who throughout the years have shared stories with us that really, and I think stories connect on a real, you know, on a deeper level, uh, more of a heart to heart level, I think, than a how to. So I I'd, I'd had this idea uh, about taking the basic premise of endless referrals, which was that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust and putting it into a parable. Uh, and coming up with a name, it was pretty easy. It was just a matter of asking, what is the what is the major essence of those salespeople and entrepreneurs who could both quickly and sustainably create those no like and trust relationships? And it's that they're givers. They're always looking to give value to others. They're focused on the value they provide to others. So coming up with the go-giver, pretty easy. But the best thing I did for the book was asking this guy named John David Mann, who at the time was editor in chief of a magazine I used to write for, or used to write a monthly column. Back then, he wasn't as well known as he is now. But but fortunately, you know, everybody who knew him knew how brilliant he was and what a wonderful storyteller and writer. Fortunately, I knew, you know, I was one of them who knew. So I asked John, and I told him about this, you know, kind of idea that I had and that I, well, he and his his lovely back then fiance, now his, his uh, lovely wife, Anna, who you know, uh, they, uh, they were visiting her mom in the, uh, the, the Tampa area. I live in Jupiter, which is north, north of West Palm Beach. They drove four hours one night to have a three-hour dinner with me. And we discussed this, uh, this idea for this kind of little book we, we were thinking. And uh, even then, I mean, he was still very busy. He was about to actually embark on a career as a, as a Hollywood screenwriter and so forth. So he was busy doing all his things. But so they took a few weeks to discuss it and finally called me one day and said, you know, Anna and I have been talking about this. We think it's a good idea. Let's do this thing. 
And uh, fortunately, and then, you know, we, then we, uh, once we had our agent, she shopped it around to the New York publishing houses. We got turned down by 24 publishing houses before the 25th one portfolio that turned out to be the most fantastic publishing partner I could ever imagine. They said yes to it. And that's kind of how it happened. It is. It, it is so amazing to me because did you know, I mean, I'm hearing this story and clearly you didn't know, um, but this is not just a little parable. This has become a movement. I mean, it truly has become a movement. And it's funny because once I became familiar with the Go-Giver, everywhere on LinkedIn, that's what I was seeing was the Go-Giver, right? And then um, I love at the beginning of you, you've just recently have, or I shouldn't say recently, but there's an expanded edition and, and that has come out of the Go-Giver. And there is a story at the beginning which is about um, this CEO who had read the book and said, I'm going to put this into principle and a company that was going under and he pulls together all these other CEOs to mastermind. And in giving, not only did they help this company and the company did better than ever before, but by giving, they learn from one another and their companies were all better. I I love that because I think something that's really interesting, Bob, and I'd love for you to talk to it is, and and it shows up in this book, is there's this dissonance that kind of lives in us of like, ooh, but if I give too much, am I going to be taken advantage? Is there scarcity mentality? Will there be enough for me? And if I tell this person my idea or if I give this person my lead, I'm going to be in trouble. And yet there's this learning that truly comes out of it in this growth. I would love to have you speak to that. Yeah, well, and I, I, I love that. And I think it's it's a great thing to talk about. And there are, there are sort of several subjects even within that. Okay. So the first is, you know, when you say, can I give too much? So first, let's look at what we mean by giving in this context, in the, in the context of the go-giver. Um uh, Really, it's it's shifting your focus, which is really where it all begins. It's shifting your focus from getting to giving. Now, when we say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others. Understanding that doing so is not only a more fulfilling way of conducting business, it's actually the most financially profitable way as well, but not for some way out there, woo-woo type of magical, mystical reasons. It actually makes very logical, very rational sense, because when you're that person who can take your focus off of yourself and place it on serving others, discovering their needs, their wants, their desires, moving from a focus on yourself to a focus on helping others solve their challenges and problems, moving off of yourself and focusing on helping to bring people closer to happiness. Well, people feel good about you. People feel great about you. People want to get to know you. They like you. They trust you. They want to be in relationship with you. They want to do business with you, if that makes sense, and you know, based on what they need and want. But they also, they want to be a part of your life. They want to tell others about you. They want to be your personal walking ambassador, right? And I mean, that's just human nature. And so when you come at it from an authentic core of really wanting to make another person's life better, it works out for everybody. You know, that's the... Uh, you know, it's just the way business takes place. And uh, that that's really, you know, what the person Arlen Sorensen, who was the example that we uh, that was used in the uh, in the uh, re- revised version where we added some of those things, you know, that's what they but but Arlen was doing that well before he read The Go-Giver. I mean, The Go-Giver was a book that inspired him because it was already him. Mm. Yeah, and that's what we find with found with a lot of people. So now we ask, well, can you give too much? I don't think you can give too much. I think you can give inappropriately. And and here's what I mean. You know, when someone says, well, can I be taken advantage of? Well, first, yeah, anybody can be taken advantage of. But if you find yourself taken advantage of as a pattern, and I'm not talking about once or twice or every so often, which is human beings, it's going to happen unless you don't get out of the house and meet anyone, right? So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about if you find yourself in a pattern of being taken advantage of, it's not because you're a giver. It's not because you're a nice person. It's because you're doing things in a certain way that's creating the context for you to be taken advantage of. Mm-hmm. Now, if that's you, I don't mean you, but I mean, if it's anybody who's listening. If that's you, first, congratulations for recognizing it. 
<laughs> because until we can recognize it, there's nothing we can do about it. So if you're saying, well, yeah, that is me. I find myself always, well, now we got to go a little deeper. Now we ask ourselves, why are we doing that? What is the payoff? And it's not, I guarantee you, it's nothing conscious. Nobody goes out there and says, hey, I think I'll just go out there and get taken advantage of today. No, but there's something inside our head that's either saying we're not worthy of being treated rightly and respectfully, or uh, I don't have the tools to be able to judge when someone is right, or there's the, the payoff of people feeling sorry for me, or maybe it's an excuse for my not having to be successful. I'm not saying that's anybody what's going on. I'm saying there's always a reason when we do things that are counterproductive toward our, our own happiness, okay? So, so now, so no, there's nothing about being a go-giver that is congruent with being a doormat or a martyr or being taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. uh, it's simply understanding the importance of focusing on them and their interests. Now, let me uh, just share this, that when I speak at sales conferences, uh, something I'll often say is, that nobody is gonna buy from you or do business with you because you have a quota to meet, okay? They're not gonna buy from you or do business with you because you need the money or even because you're a really nice person, okay? They're gonna do business with you because they believe they will be better off by doing so than by not doing so. Now, this happens to be great news for that person who really loves to serve others. Sure. Okay. And, and this is also why John David Mann and I say that money is simply an echo of value. It's the thunder, if you will, to values lightning, which means nothing more than the value must be the focal point, the value you're providing another. And the money that you receive is simply a natural result of the value you're providing. This is business. This is how big successful, sustainably successful businesses are created. You find a way to bring value to others. Mm. I don't know how many, I'm like, you must have dropped the mic like a dozen times in your <laughs> response. But, but one thing that is so powerful to me and I'm, what I'm resonating with is um, the whole self, you know, maybe old, older school thinking, and we're still thinking about this, like, oh, you know, there's a difference between how I show up in my personal life and how I show up in my professional life. And I can't bring that personal to my professional. And I know that there's, we were just having a conversation about one of your stories in your book. Um, but I'll just say for my personal, I have always knew intuitively that nurturing was my superpower. As a child, I knew it. I knew that that was something I was good at or like I just you know like that was like it it always came forth and growing up a lot of people would say to me oh that's so sweet Sonia you're so nice pat on the back what else do you do and as I you know I struggled through that as, as we sure. all do in our stories but when I became a business owner and I had to have some business coaching <laughs> because I was trying to separate that I was trying to separate my nurturing compassionate side with I have to be something else and that's the moment Right. The moment that I embraced it completely, 110% and said no, uh, actually it was Cassandra Speaks, reading Cassandra Speaks by Elizabeth Lesser. And I was like, wait a minute, this is my power. The moment I released that obstacle, yeah. I thrived. I mean, I met, I was like, hello, abundance. Nice to meet you. Uh, <laughs> And that, that's how like you just speak that language. And again, like what that personal experience was like for me. Well, you know, it's it's interesting because law number four, the law of authenticity, right? And this is where, and, and we were talking before the the, the um, interview started about uh, the part where Deborah, um, you know, uh, talked about, um, and this was in relation to to Hillary's story about how you know she said the most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. And what she, I think she was really saying is a couple of things. One is that all the skills in the world, right? The sales skills, technical skills, people skills, as important as they are, and they are, they are all very important. They're also all for naught if you don't come at it from your true authentic core. You know, Sonia, if you don't lead with that nurturing heart, it's not going to, you know? And so, and, and I think people can tell now, I also think that people take the word authenticity and they, they un, unfortunately, I think it gets twisted around a little bit and loses its its meaning or has a different meaning. Can I share with you my thoughts on that? Would love it. 
I think in a way people have, have kind of looked at authenticity as this is who I am and take it or leave it. And yeah, right, right. you know, this is the person who says, well, I have anger issues and I yell at people a lot. And if I were to act any differently, that wouldn't be authentic of me. Mm -hmm. That's baloney. That's malarkey. It simply means this person has an authentic problem mm -hmm. that they need to authentically work on uh, in order to grow and improve themselves and step into their highest authentic version of themselves. So I, I think people use authenticity as an excuse for not changing and not, not growing. I define authenticity in a very simple way. I tend to do things very simply, right? And, and, and so I simply describe authenticity as acting congruently with your values. Mm -hmm. That's it. See, and I also think sometimes they, they uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, that they confuse authenticity with, with transparency. Now, a lot of times authentic, uh, authenticity and transparency both work together very well, very important a lot of times, but not always. And let me explain what I mean, okay? Let's say you have a sales appointment with a customer of yours and this customer, he's a nice guy, but he's not a warm, fuzzy guy, okay? He's the type when you see him, he's going to say, hi, how you doing? And he expects you to say, good, how are you? So he can say good and get down to business, okay? That's just who he is. It's no judgment. It's just who he is, okay? Uh, you know, someone like me, if I'm your client, I want to know about your kids and I want you to ask me about this. And that, again, just different styles, different people. But this guy, that's not what he wants. So you wake up that morning, you must have slept wrong because your neck is just killing you. Okay. And you would rather not even be there, you know, a whole bit. So you go in there, he says, how are you doing? <laughs> and if you're going to be transparent, you would say, oh, my neck is killing me. I don't know what I did. I say, I just don't even want to be here talking to you. I can't wait to. Be. Now that's transparent, mm -hmm. but it's totally inappropriate. Mm -hmm. it's not authentic because I'm going to assume that your highest value is serving your client. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not always the same, right? Now, later when you go to your chiropractor and she says, hey, Sonia, how are you? And you say, oh. I must have slept wrong. My neck is killing. Well, that's now that's mm -hmm. totally appropriate. Okay. So, you know, so I think we have to, you know, we don't have to necessarily share everything with everybody and be that transparent in order to be authentic. In other words, there's a time and place for everything. I, I think that's so valuable. And I love that too, because we do, I think there is, I was thinking victim mentality when you say that. I, I have heard that same thing because we do a lot of, you know, the decided heart is about, and we've had people, by the way, say to us, well, you can't go into corporations and use the word heart. It's like, well, actually, yes, yes, we can. Because, because if you don't connect with your own heart, how can you possibly expect to connect with others and to serve, right? And so I think, and even I've even had people tell me before, you know, oh, well, you showed up with joy and I knew that this was happening in your life. And so how you were being fake. I said, no, I wasn't because my, one of my highest values is to leave people better than you found yeah. when I, than I find them. Yeah. And so I will show up with joy. And if I can't, I will give myself grace and I will reschedule. Exactly. But that's, that's not fake. Right. That's being true to who I am at my core. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. By the way, Colleen Barrett, who was the uh, CEO or president of um, Southwest Airlines, uh, she started out as Herb um, uh, Kelleher's uh, administrative assistant, worked her way up to president, CEO of, and, and she spoke at one of my conferences when we used to have uh, the big conferences. Uh, you know, she she was there speaking on her about her her book, the principles from her book, which is called Lead with Love. Mm -hmm. So please don't tell me, you know, then you've got somebody like uh, Bob Chapman, who's the owner of who's the uh, CEO, chairman and CEO of um, Barry Waymiller, which is a a manufacturing firm, an international manufacturing firm with tens of thousands of employees and. Everybody there is treated as a, a treasured family member, you know, it's a, so please for, you know, for people, it's that old school type of thing. And it just is so not true. And, you know, it, it's so funny too, because uh, uh, Jocko Willink and Leif ba uh, Babin, who wrote um, uh, uh, 
I'm trying I have the book up there uh, extreme ownership they're navy seals they were in you know in the war and so forth and what they said is you know you had to you had to 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 speak with tact and empathy to people or they just weren't going to perform i mean never mind just the nicey nice stuff right they're not going to perform as well and he said what 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 um armies have learned from time immemorial is top down just doesn't work mm. right because people are people right and so it just you know so so for all that that you know we still want that that kind of old school type of uh type of thing no it doesn't work we need to bring ourselves to work we need to bring our humanity to work and again it's not just warm fuzzy stuff it is much more profitable uh, than you know that top down command and control leave your leave your emotions at home and, and I'm so happy that, you know, there's a lot of research on this now where it helps convince the old thinking, you know, the research showing that, you know, that huma bring okay. humanity to work, another mic drop, to lead to productivity, which is amazing in terms of our, you know, what we are all in this Zoom room thinking. Um, for, it's possible that some of our viewers and, and listeners may not know the go-giver. Is there a way that you can just kind of give a nice synopsis of, of this book, not to give away a lot, but oh, just okay. to just to say, what is the, the synopsis of the book? And I, I know that that's probably going to to create a lot of curiosity. <laughs> Thank you. Well, it's it's a, a short parable about a guy named Joe, and Joe is a um, he's a good guy. He's a, he's an up and coming, you know, hardworking, ambitious, aggressive salesperson who's looking to meet his quota, and he's had a couple of unsuccessful quarters. And he's and the, the the challenge with Joe is that he is focused on himself, and he's focused on his quota. Like again, like anyone's going to buy from him because he has a quota to meet. He's focused on who owes what to him and what he can get out of out of this. And he meets a mentor by the name of Pindar, who counsels him and introduces him and exposes him to some other very very successful people. And he he learns that once he can kind of let go of that and realize it's not about him, right? It's it's about those you serve again not just touchy feely stuff it's it, this is what's profitable in business um when you can shift your focus off of yourself right and onto others that's when you're going to develop those no like and trust relationships with the marketplace and you're going to be very very successful and that's what you know that's what happened with joe and we john and i framed it around five laws of what we call stratospheric success and those are the laws of value compensation influence authenticity and receptivity i i love that 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 you have kept those things going as well in in the subsequent books after including Thank the you. go giver where it's the four the four giving and the one receiving and i think that that is so Sonia and I are going to have a whole conversation with it because as much as uh, I giving is a very comfortable thing for me, receiving, <clears throat> Sonia's going to start laughing, is really hard for me. Not receiving knowledge, learning, growth, <laughs> criticism, that type of thing, right. but receiving gifts, are, it's for, for whatever reason. So it's, it's, I love, I love every bit of this book. I have a question for you though. Sure. And I will tell you, I, I found so much joy in the fact that, so I did this backwards. I read The Go-Giver Marriage before The Go-Giver. But some of the characters, I was like, oh, I think that that character recurred there. Yeah. So we have we have four books that John and I wrote in the series. Three of them are parables. So there's The Go-Giver, which is the first one. Uh, there's uh, Go Givers Sell More. That's the only one that's not a parable. That's more of an uh, of an application guide for the Go Giver. The second book in the series is the Go Giver Leader, and the third book, third parable in the series, is the Go Giver Influencer. Then John and Anna just wrote the Go Giver Marriage. Uh, so that was their book, not not mine. But yeah. but yes, they they brought back a number of the characters. So if you if you read the Go Giver Leader and Go Giver Influencer, you'll see a few more of them that that will make sense to you as well. So they can all be read. Um, they're all self contained, so they can you could read them in any order. But when you read a bit of order, you'll see you know you'll see how they kind of uh, where some of the characters come back. It's always in the same fictional town, and you see what happens to Rachel's uh you know famous coffee, coffee. So her forth. famous coffee i'm so excited yeah at the end of this book i was so excited for rachel and then i was like oh just you wait rachel more's coming <laughs> so but that's 
you know, Bob, my question to you about the characters, because I really did love the characters. It was so great. Do you personally identify with any one of the characters in the book? Well, you know, at first, I think we're we're all Joe. We're all Joe yeah. or Josephine at one time, right? We all, you know, and I certainly was Joe when I started in sales. And it was the wise advice of a, a what I call a drive-by mentor. You know, one of, one of my current mentors and great friends, her name is Dondi Scumachi. And she, I think she came up with the term drive-by mentor. I'm not sure we were in conversation once. And a drive-by mentor is that person who just happens to show, you, may, you know, you may know the person, you know, you may have a, a, a you know, somewhat of a relationship with that person, but not, you don't have to, not much. It could be, you've said hi to this person. It could be that they just happen to be somewhere where you are, but it's that person who says the very thing you need to hear at the moment you need to hear it, at the moment you're most receptive to it. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, back when I was Joe, basically, he, this person said to me, you know, Berg, if you want to make a lot of money in sales, he said, don't have making money as your target. Your target is serving others. Now, when you hit the target, he said, you'll get a reward. And that reward will come in the form of money and you can do with that money whatever you choose but never forget the money is simply the reward for hitting the target it's not the target itself your target is serving others well that's the law of value basically in you know in the go giver right which and this is 40 years ago this happened he was my drive by mentor i didn't I hardly knew the guy okay so anyway so i was joe but I, I think Gus is somebody who I can kind of relate yeah. you to, the guy who's in the re long rambling conversations where nothing ever seems to get done, yet he's always in the middle of everything that happened, right? You know, <laughs> so I, I, I think we, you know, I think we all kind of relate to, to those characters at different times in our, you know, in our lives. I just feel like, thank you so much, Bob. I mean, although this is, you know, this is one of those episodes where one can listen to it a dozen times and get something new mm -hmm. out of this conversation. It's amazing. Before we close up, is there anything else that you want to make sure that our, our audience learns, knows, listens to, um, and of course, how they can reach out to you? You know, I mean, I think it's really just a matter of asking yourself within every interaction, every transaction, every relationship you're building, every tweet or post or whatever is just asking yourself is what i'm about to say do tweet post what have you is it likely to add value to this other person's life and if the answer is yes it's probably cool to go ahead and do it if not probably good to rethink it you know so i think if we start out there we're kind of you know again nine steps ahead of the game in a in a 10-step game um, in terms of your question, where can people reach me? Berg, B-U-R-G dot com works. Uh, pretty much everything is there. Uh, we also have a GoGiver online membership community that people can find out about at the GoGiver community dot com. There, there are just so many, not just mic drop moments here, but I will tell you that I have about, oh, 10 pages of notes from just reading. Oh, thank you, Hillary. That, oh, no, so beautiful. And I, I have to tell you, there's a moment in the book where you say, um, you know, Joe is like, oh, I don't want to waste your time. And, and Pinder says, well, you don't have the power okay. to waste my okay. time. Uh, I loved that moment. And I just want to say this has been such an enriching blessing of time from you. So, so thank you for that. And, and thank you to our listeners too, for joining us for, for another episode. We're always so grateful for you. Make sure you're following Bob and, you know, all of the happenings at the Go-Giver community, because I will tell you, this has just been a rich, there's so much that you will get from this connection and the storytelling from this. Make sure that you're following us too on our social media platforms and subscribing at the, the pod, pod, podcast platform of your choice. Don't forget we're at the, the dheffect.com and uh, we have lots of great opportunities to nurture your decided heart. But Sonia, you know what you're going to have to say now. We always say, until next time, may you have the courage to live with a decided heart. Thank you, everyone. To ensure that you don't miss one amazing episode on the DH Effect and capture meaningful conversations with those living with a decided heart, why don't you go over and click that subscribe button on our YouTube channel. And for those audio listeners out there who love podcasts, why don't you pick your favorite podcast platforms like this one on Spotify? Go ahead and find that follow button, click on it, and never miss an episode.